Hi, uh, this is Sir CJ and welcome to Biology 10. Uh, let us now uh, start with the very first uh, session. Uh, and this session is divided into it, into the following parts. So the first uh, part is a discussion of uh, the introductions as well as uh, the various uh, learning competencies which you are supposed to uh, learn in this uh, session. The second one is uh, pre-assessment uh, where you are going to be choosing the odd organ uh, out of a group of organs. And then the last one will be a discussion about the nervous system we will be talking about the structure and the functions of the human nervous system. Uh, in the uh, Philippines, uh, this presentation is uh, after the following learning competency, which is explain the role of hormones involved in the female and male reproductive systems with the following code for the, uh, from the most uh, essential learning competencies. Let's begin. Uh, for the first, uh, for the first uh, part, this will be an introduction of the learning competencies. Uh, the human body as we know it is made up of different organ systems and all of these organ systems are coordinating with each other so that they could perform their functions well. However, if one organ system malfunctions, limbawa, if the respiratory system malfunctions, um, the entire body is actually uh, getting affected and uh, when it does get affected because of the malfunctioning, or a disorder in a particular organ system, uh, the body is said to be in a state of imbalance. Okay? The instability uh, or the, uh, the problem uh, by uh, a particular organ system uh, cannot be actually rectified or corrected by other organ systems because uh, each system actually has its own function in the body. So if your uh, respiratory system is having some ailments, uh, those ailments are ailments are not actually going to be uh, fixed or uh, corrected by your, say for instance, digestive system. Uh, in the past, you have studied that the human body systems are uh, the combined functional units composed of various organs. So uh, I think in the past, uh, this discussion started with the following. So uh, the basic unit of life is uh, cell. And if you put cells together, uh, that will uh, make a tissue. And then the tissue, if you're going to put them, toge them together, especially if they're of the same kind, uh, you will be uh, creating an organ. And then if you put organs together, if you group them, uh, you're going to be getting or you're going to be uh, producing an organ system. And then if the organ systems are put together, then obviously that's going to result to an organism. And then the organism... If you put them together uh, of the same kind, uh, that will be a population of organisms. And uh, if you put the various uh, populations of organisms together, you will make a community. Okay, And then if you are going to uh, put organisms with some other uh, abiotic factors, uh, the organisms are the biotic factors, uh, that will be resulting to an eco system and if you put ecosystems uh, together you will be creating the entire or composing the entire biosphere now uh, there there are certain biological levels and from this level an organ system is a group of uh, of or various organs okay now uh, when you were in the ninth grade, you studied about the circulatory and uh, the respiratory system and how they work together and uh, how lifestyle such as uh, lifestyle decisions like cigarette smoking or say for instance uh, on the bright side, um, good exercise or cardiovascular exercises uh, affect the health, the general health of these two organ systems. Uh, in this year, you will be learning about the coordinated functions of the reproductive, the endocrine, as well as the nervous system. We're going to be uh, going first with the nervous system. Now, as you go through this module, you will be able to understand how uh, organisms having feedback mechanisms are co coordinated by the nervous and the endocrine systems. Uh, you will also learn how these feedback mechanisms help organisms maintain homeostasis to reproduce and survive. Now, uh, by the end of this uh, module, you are expected to uh, display the following. Uh, the first uh, learning competency or the first uh, learning objective is that you should be able to describe 
the parts of the nervous and the crane and reproductive systems along with their functions. The second uh, learning competency is that you should be capable of explaining the role of hormones involved in the female and male reproductive systems. And for the third learning competency, you should be capable of describing the feedback mechanisms in regulating processes in the female reproductive system. And uh, number four, you should be capable of describing how the nervous system coordinates and regulates feedback mechanisms to maintain homeostasis. And uh, yeah, that concludes the first uh, part of this session. Let us now proceed to the second part. For the second part, you might need uh, one fourth a sheet of paper. Uh, please uh, write your name, your grade and section, the day to day. For the general directions of uh, this uh, pre-assessment, you will be you have to study each set of diagrams or each group of organs uh, in, of the human body. Then determine which of these organs uh, does not belong to the group by naming it over here. Uh, on the last uh, column naman, you will be writing your reason why you chose that particular organ. Okay, for the first uh, group of organs, we have the following. Choose the odd one out and then uh, state your reason. You may now uh, begin answering this item. Are you done? If you are, let us now proceed to uh, the second item, item number two. For item number two, uh, these are the organs in the group. Okay, please choose the odd one and then state your reason for having that answer. Are you done? If you are through, let us now proceed to the uh, third item in this pre-assessment. For the third item, uh, this is the group of organs you will work with. Please choose the odd one and write it over here. And then uh, state your reason for choosing that odd one over here. Are you done? If you are, let us now proceed to the uh, next uh, item. This is the last item for this pre-assessment. Item number four. These are the organs for this group. Okay, so uh, please choose the odd one and then state your reason for having that answer. Are you through? Finalize your answers. Let us now uh, check your work. These are the answers to the table. For the first uh, group of organs, group of organs, uh, this is the odd one. It's the heart. The reason for that is that the heart is a part of the circulatory system, while all the rest, the brain, um, the uh, spinal cord, and then the uh, neuron over here, are all parts of the nervous system for the next uh, item the uh, odd one is the lungs the reason for that is because the lungs are a part of the respiratory system while the uterus the uh, ovaries and fallopian tube as well as this uh, area over here i think it's the uh, vagina and the cervix over here are all parts of the female reproductive system the next uh, item has the following group. The odd one, obviously, is the skull. It is because the skull is a part of the skeletal system, while the rest, the thyroid gland, the adrenal gland, and the uh, pancreas, are all parts, major parts, of the uh, endocrine system. The last uh, group. It's actually the smallest uh, group of uh, organs is as follows. The odd one are the intestines or the intestine. The reason for that is because the intestine is a part of the digestive system while uh, the rest are actually parts of the male reproductive system. 
The scoring for this will be one check for the odd one and then another check for the reason if it's correct. So uh, you have a total of 8 points. Indicate your score on the upper right hand corner of your uh, answer sheet. Alright. Uh, we are now through with this uh, part of the session. Let us now proceed to the last part, which is a discussion about the nervous system, the structure and functions of the human nervous system. The uh, nervous system is actually divided into two parts. The first part is the central nervous system. The central nervous system serves as the main processing center for the entire nervous system. It, in, it consists of around uh, two main components. The first component of this central nervous system is, of course, the brain. The brain is an organ that is located within the skull. It is also being protected by the skull and it functions as an organizer and distributor of information for the body. The brain is subdivided into three main parts. The largest part is the cerebrum. It is also at the upper part of the brain and it uh, controls activity and thought. The smaller part over here is the cerebellum. It is the part under the cerebrum that controls posture, balance, and uh, body coordination. The last part of the brain is the brainstem. The brainstem is the part that connects the brain to the spinal cord and controls automatic functions such as breathing, digestion, heart rate, and blood pressure. So you don't actually consciously uh, control uh, your breathing all the time, right? There are times when you uh, just uh, are breathing, right? Even without you thinking about inhaling or exhaling, your uh, body got that covered for you. It's because uh, your brainstem is actually taking care of those kinds of functions. Uh, for instance, your heart rate. You don't control your heart rate really, as well as your blood pressure and your digestion. Those are functions being regulated by your brainstem. Alright, the second part of the central nervous system is the spinal cord. And remember that the brainstem connects the brain and the spinal cord. The spinal cord serves as a channel for signals between the brain and the rest of the body and controls simple musculoskeletal reflexes without input from the brain. So there are times when uh, we need to respond as quickly as we can and uh, we do that by just uh, tapping onto our spinal cords and not really onto our brains. The second uh, division of the uh, human nervous system is the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system connects the central nervous system to the organs, to your various organs, as well as your limbs or yung extremities natin. That's uh, for instance, yung ating mga kamay, yung ating mga paa. Uh, the peripheral nervous system has two main subdivisions. The first one is called the somatic nervous system. This system is associated with a voluntary control of body movements. So uh, everything in the somatic nervous system is actually voluntary. So they are gonna happen even without conscious thought. So uh, the, the first part of the somatic nervous system are uh, all of your nerves that are connected to the spine. And these nerves are, co are called spinal nerves. Uh, the nerves, these are nerves that carry motor, that's uh, through movement, and sensory, that is uh, through uh, stimuli, signals between the spinal cord and the body. The second uh, part of the somatic nervous system are your cranial nerves. These are nerve fibers that carry information into, so papunta, and out of, paalis, ng ating mga brain stems. Alright. The second part of the peripheral nervous system is the autonomic nervous system. Uh, this system naman is associated with the involuntary control of body movements and has two subdivisions. Okay, anyway, let us correct the former understanding for, for this. 
when we say voluntary pala, that is actually us controlling the body. So there is conscious control. I'm so sorry. Alright, so again, for the somatic nervous system, uh, the, this involves voluntary control uh, wherein if you had, alimbawa, want to think about something or maybe if you want to uh, coordinate with the part of your body to move it, uh, you do that through your somatic uh, nervous system. So that is what coordinates your uh, central nervous system as well as your organs and your other limbs. For the autonomic nervous system, the man, so from the word autonomous, they can actually, uh, they're actually functioning or parts of this uh, division of the of the uh, peripheral nervous system are actually functioning even without conscious control. For the first uh, part of the subdivision of the uh, autonomic nervous system, we have the uh, sympathetic nervous system. So there are, there are actually special times uh, when the sympathetic nervous system is going to function. So it's not like it always functions. Okay, it it does. Uh, require a particular situation for it to function and it gets activated when the body is in a dynamic role of stress that is for instance uh, for instance uh, if uh, if your body is in a in a stressful situation uh, your sympathetic nervous system is gonna release um it's gonna um, tawag don, uh, release a lot of sweat it's gonna increase its heart rate it's gonna increase your breathing rate and it's gonna dilate your pupils as well because you are in a state of stress. However, after being in that state of stress, your parasympathetic autonomous nervous system is going to take over. Uh, the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system maintains the body functions or restores them uh, to their normal modes, which is usually the relaxed mode. So, uh, and bawa, uh, you're already done being stressed out or you're done being uh, chased by a dog. Uh, then you're now uh, at home. You are now uh, cooling down. You are relaxing. What now functions is your parasympathetic nervous system. And I think that's it. So for this session of uh, grade 10 biology, we were able to uh, finish the following. The first is a discussion about the introduction uh, of the uh, learning competencies. The second part naman is uh, it was a pre-assessment where it shows the odd organ uh, out of the uh, group of organs. You had four groups of organs. And then the last one was a discussion already about the scent about the nervous system. It's two main divisions, the central nervous system and the uh, peripheral nervous system. This is Sir CJ and I hope that I will see you in the next uh, video lesson for grade 10 biology.